I'm on the Consumer Advisory Committee, although that probably could be disputed since, since I rarely make the meetings. But um, my husband and Jen Cobb and I founded the Full Life Ahead Foundation, and we hold family camps down at Children's Harbor three times a year. And I co-authored... My okay. fingers don't work very well. I got it. I'll just hold it. Oh, okay. Okay. So I brought the books that we had in the office, and if you do not have one, would you raise your hand um, so that Linda can bring one to you? These books are all the steps that we wished that we had had when our daughters, Jan and my daughters, were going through transition. And so, the Office of Special Education Programs in Washington, D.C. saw it and asked if they could vet it for use in all 50 states and the territories. So I worked directly with them to do that. And it's been updated several times since then. And so we just wanted to let you have a copy of it if you don't have it. Uh, so Full Life does a lot of different things. We have a circle graphic, and I'm sorry I don't have anything with me today, but it revolves around the family. We're, we're different and unique because it's not just about the individual, it's about the family. If we help the individual, the person, achieve a dream that they can come up with about living and working in their own community, then the family regains their own identity and it's not all about their child. And they can have their own dreams of a future and do what they would like to do. And that's huge. And I've done an exercise. We also have a program at the Red Barn out in Leeds in Birmingham and Carolyn Green is our advocate discovery employment person in Mobile. And she has one at Silver, Dale, Silver Hills on the Eastern Shore. And I did a dream building exercise with the parents at the Red Barn. And three out of four parents said they didn't have any dreams because they, all they could do is concentrate on day to day with their young people. And that's heartbreaking. I can identify because I was there. With Denny, it was 24-7, 365 days a year. But we all have to have dreams for ourselves as well. So if you'd like to be on our email list, would you tell Linda so she can send me your contact information? And then you'll be notified when we have the next camp in July or we might have one before that because I've asked if we could have four camps this year because they're in such demand. And the total cost for a whole weekend for your entire family is $50. So, yeah. Uh, and we do have scholarships if you truly can't afford it, but we try to save those for the people who really are in really are in need. So uh, I've got a few business cards up here, but other than that, I, that's all I really wanted to say. You can look us up, and um, I hope to see some of you again soon. Thank you. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Next weekend. <laughs> and, and it has a waiting list. And not one family has canceled. Uh, yes. There should be. I haven't looked at it. It's July. 
um, towards the middle of July, I think. Uh, but I, I asked yesterday if we could add a fourth camp. And I think the best date would be maybe April. So, uh, it, no, it hasn't opened yet. No, they wait until a month or two before to open registration. Uh, the camp's held at Children's Harbor on, Lo on Lake Martin, outside Alex City. And we're in a Harbor Lodge, so you get your own cabin. Uh, everything is 100% accessible. Uh, we cook all of the meals ourselves. We divide into four groups. Uh, the parents have a group. Just a minute, Sonia. The parents have uh, one, one group, and we're trying to give you some of the information that you crave. Um, but we generally have the presenters there for the whole weekend so that you can talk to them after you've slept on it. Uh, it is fashioned a lot after Pippa. <laughs> uh, just a minute, Jenny. Um, then we have one for the adults and one for the teens. And the children's program is only for children of the participants or the volunteers. We don't directly educate the children. And then we have some free time and activities and lots of other things going on. We always have fun on Friday nights and Saturday night is the big dance party with karaoke and everybody loves that. So, yep. Okay. It is a great experience. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I've got. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yes. No, the one next weekend is all lined up. Yeah, we do need to have people first back, but I'm not doing it anymore. You need to get in touch with Suzanne Stewart. Yeah. Send me a text or an email. And I'll give you her contact information, Jenny. All right. Any more questions? They're free. They're, uh, they're transition from high school to adult life. And they cover about 20 different sections. And the last section is a ton of pages on resources. Um, it gives you 800 numbers and websites and on everything we could think of, different syndromes and disorders and help sites and everything else in the world. We did the 800 numbers and websites so that they would work from anywhere and they can give you your local contact. Oh, it was wonderful. Um, when, when I was director, we were all the, All the meetings were in Montgomery, and we met at the Embassy Suites, and we went to um, the House and the Senate and met with our legislators. We had a session where we actually went in uh, to watch, and they explained the whole legislative process on how the bill from start to finish is done. And nights were rip roaring around a piano. Everybody stayed up and sang and partied. And the next year, no, I guess it was that year, wasn't it, Jana, that Jane Letterman and all types of 
pranks. <laughs> um, it was a group that really, really bonded very, very well. So, is it on? Okay, yeah. Um, but I had Don Hoyle from Michigan, and he came down and talked about community activism and how to set up things in your community, and it was fabulous. I mean, he had dozens and dozens of ways to get your community really fired up about working with people with disabilities. And Alan Bergman came. Unfortunately, he couldn't come that first week. For the first day, his flights were messed up by snow. So we did a cardboard cutout of him <laughs> for the first day. But he made it for the second. And we had Catherine Carroll from Colorado, uh, from Tango. Her, her daughter, Mikkel, is has a significant disability, and Carrie Griffin came at the same time from Griffin Hamas, and he he is uh, he was at the time the CEO of Griffin Hamas, and they're all about employment as well. And when Kat, when Mikkel left high school, Catherine is a national presenter. Catherine understands education. She understands employment. She understood it all. And she had the best transition plan that Denver has ever seen. And yet, when Mikkel left school, every supported employment agency said, no, we can't work with her. And she called me going, what am I going to do? <laughs> and I said, you need a hope team. Helping other people envision what Mikkel can do. And she said, I don't know anybody. I said, y'all go to Starbucks every morning. Start there. So they did. Because those kids at Starbucks could see what Mikhail could do. And so Henry and our then executive director, Lisa Manley, and I flew out to Denver. And we facilitated a hope meeting for Mikhail. She had immediate goals, six-month goals, one-year goals, and five-year goals. And within six months, every goal had been met, including living in her own condo. She couldn't open a door. She couldn't feed herself. Power wheelchair, can't make it run. And you're saying, how? Good structure using a university students and colleges around the Denver area for her caregivers and roommates. Free room and board for time. She had her own van, they drive her for in exchange for caregiving hours. Uh, after living in that condo for a year and paying rent on time, because it's a Section 8 housing, so she didn't even have to handle the money. They allowed her to move into a condo across the park. Now, we're talking about downtown Denver and start buying a condo. So she is a homeowner. It's a phenomenal story. It, the things that are possible are incredible. So, there are a lot of lives that have been touched across the way. So, anyway, I've got a few cards up here. Linda can always put you in touch with me. But, thank you.
testing one, two.
Okay, everybody, um, we're going to start our session back. We have some more entertainment with Stephen. So, um, looking forward to the to the last session, and we have a couple of participants that wanted to say a few words after Stephen is done, and that is Jenny and Veronica. So, and then Sonia has requested a little chat with everybody after that. So we've got a little wrap up that y'all are gonna be in charge of. So that is great. All right, I'm gonna turn it over. All right, thank you all for coming back. Now the question is, did you all come back because you didn't wanna hurt my feelings or did, is it because you really wanna come back? So there's really no way to tell since I told you earlier that you'll hurt my feelings if you don't come back. Either way, I'm glad you're back and the torture continues. Okay, so we are still on systematic instruction <clears throat> and we're gonna talk about the seven, seven phase sequence. There was something I was gonna tell you. I was sitting over there and I'm thinking, I gotta tell them this. And I didn't write it down, so I don't remember. So I guess I'm not gonna tell you. That is, unless I remember. <clears throat> so let's talk seven phase sequence. When we do customized employment, there's this seven phase sequence that we follow. And it's there, typical ways, typical people, typical means. And then we have the phase four is facilitate success and performance. Phase five, support, assist, and substitute. Recognize typical means. And phase seven is adapt and modify, modify typical ways. When we are going out, when, once we do our um, discovery and we are exploring employment for individuals, we often do what is called a job analysis. When we go into the workplace, it's more than just, can I have a job for this person? When we go into the workplace, remember, we are looking to make sure that the person is going to be successful. This does not mean that the first job we're going to hit the um, hit it out the ballpark. We don't always get a home run with the with, with, with the first job, but many times we do. In fact, more often than not, we get we hit the home run. And it happens like this. When we go to the job site and we, we're, we're talking employment, we, we, the first thing is the, um, the natural way, the typical way, how things are done at this job site. We want to know how they do things. Because when you go, when you go to um, any job site, I want you to understand that even if, even if you, if, if you come from one very similar, for instance, Walgreens and um, CVS, you might have somebody go, oh yeah, I know what to do at Walgreens because I used to work at CVS. I've had people um, that we, we interview for employment with our agency and they're like, oh yeah, I know what you do because I used to work over there. And I'm like, no, you don't know what we do. We train our people our way and it's true for every employer so you want to know what are the typical ways um things are our are, are, are business is being conducted remember we did our a shirt folding over there if you're working in, at, a, at a company we want to know how you do that and that's the, the way the typical way the method of performance um how you perform tasks the step-by-step -step procedure what do you do first what do you do last 
what has to be done before something else is done. That, that, that's the typical way uh, that things are, things are done. And as we go in and do our job analysis, we're making record at the, of that. And then we look at the typical means. And what's that? That has to be, uh, that focus on, 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 on how things are being taught, the instruction. You see, okay, there are some companies who will go, look, I want, we're going to teach you, the way we teach you, we give you the website and you go in and you watch a series of videos. There are other companies where you go and there's somebody standing in front of you teaching you. And there are some, some companies, they just throw you in it and say, learn as you go along. Those are, have to do with typical means, the way things are done. What type of support um, uh, new employees have as they, as they come to work at this place. And we want to know all of that as we're going in with, with the people uh, that, that we are presenting. This is our job analysis going on here. And... The next te step is, who are the, um, the typical people, the, uh, the natural people? You want to know who's the go-to person here. Um, have, you, uh, have you ever gone on a job site and there's something, you need help with something, but, and you ask one person, they go, no, but I'm not the person who handled that. That person handled that, and you go to that person, and they go, no, you should go to that person. And you go, but she just sent me to you. And all of that, and you're going all around in circle. We're identifying all of that. What's the typical people? Who is the support person? Um, what's the chain of command? Do we go straight to the manager? Or do we go to the supervisor? There are some supervisors, if you ever jump over their head and go to their manager, you're in serious trouble with them for the rest of your life on that job. And there's some supervisor will ask you, why are you coming to me? That's above my pay scale. Go to the boss. So you got to know how, who are the typical people, how you do things there. And that's what um, phase three has to, uh, has to do with. Now, when we get to phase four, we facilitate. Uh, that, that's a facilita facilitation phase. This is how we're ready to work here. Um, the, we're using the information that we get in phase one, two, and three. And we're determining if our people that we're, that we're placing in this position, that we're matching with this job, can this person function with the typical ways of this job, the typical means of this job, and the typical people of this job? Can the, is, 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 is this a, a situation that you want to put your people into? Now, if it is all good and dandy to go, then we go with it. But if when we get to phase four, we realize that, oh, definitely he can do the job, but the way this job is being taught, there's no way you're going to give Johnny a website and think he's going to learn the job from that. We have to modify um, this section. We have to figure, okay, he knows the job, but now we need to, we need to facilitate something here because the way the job is being taught, once he learns the job, he's going to be able to do the job. But the problem is, the way you are teaching the job, he's never going to learn the job that way. So, we're, we're making some adjust, adjustment there. There are some people, going back to Mark. Mark had one manager, Mindy. When Mindy came to the, to the store, Mindy was the, uh, Mindy the GM. Before that, Mark had a great relationship with all of his GM. Mindy was the kind of person like, look, I told you one time, I don't, I, I don't want to deal, deal with this anymore. And that's just how she is. And a lot of times people go, um, man, Mindy's a terrible person. No, Mindy's not a terrible person. That's just who Mindy is. Um, there are some people that sit down and they talk to you forever. For some people, oh, you talk too much. You know, and there's some people who need that. So we understand that. We realize that Mark needed someone who's going to really nurture him. So we realize that Mindy is never going to be Mark's go-to person. So Mindy, in this case, who was that typical person in the workplace, we have to modify that. And we said, okay, 
who can we use to be Mark's go-to person now that Mindy is not that person? I had another guy, Carl. Carl called me crying one day. And I said, what's wrong, Carl? He said, my boss hates me. And I'm like, your boss hates you. And he's like, she's a mean. She's terrible. She yells at me. She comes in in the morning and she just yells. She's just cruel. And I call up the boss and I, and I, and I said, hey, how is Carl doing? And she goes, Carl's doing great. We love Carl over here. <laughs> and I'm like, Carl is saying she hates him and she's saying she loves him. And uh, I went on the job site. And the supervisor, she came in and she goes, chop, 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 chop. Come on, chop, chop. We got, a, we got a busy day today. Come on, come on, come on. Let's roll, baby. Let's roll, let's roll. And she's just super loud. And when she's doing that, Carl heard she's yelling. But she's not just yelling at everybody. She's yelling at me. And I realized that she wasn't mean. She was just this hyped up person. And she thinks this is how she encouraged her, her, her people. Uh, and, and, and so I, we, I, I went to her and I said, you know, Carl is afraid of you. And she go, come on, child. He ain't afraid of me. And I'm like, no, he really is afraid of you. He, he really is. And she said, Carl, you afraid of, you afraid of me? And he's going in his shell right there, right on the spot. She go, come on. You, you know I ain't doing nothing. And I'm like, hold on. Let's break this down. Is there a person that can give Carl instruction? And when Carl needs help, he can go to her. Because, and she's like, of course. I love Carl. And she, and she, and, 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 and she gave him um, to Linda. And Linda is just... This, Carl, what we're going to do today is this. And, that, and Carl, I love that. Now, Heather, who's another person I serve, if you go to Heather and go, Heather, Heather go look at you and go, I'm not your child. Don't talk to me like that. So you have to know the person that you're supporting and make sure that, that the typical person is going to be the right person for that, for, 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 for that individual. And that's what um, these phases are about. So, but the thing that I want to point out is before you ask for support, don't walk into uh, a, an employer and go, remember, we're talking customized employment. And customized employment is us knowing our individual's strength and matching that with the employer's needs. So we don't walk in and go, well, I have somebody um, who has disability and that person is not going to be able to do all the job. We're going to do some modification. Before we start talking modification, let's see if, or if that person can do it just the way things are. Because a lot of the times we ask for modifications that we don't have to ask for. And I remember what I was going to say, and I'm going to say it before I forget it. You see, a lot of the times when we ask for modification, our, our, when, we, when, we, when we think in support, we think people. You know, things happening at the job, and, and the way we're going to fix that, we're going to have a, a job coach go inside there and train that person to do the job. I have, I have one lady once who could not. For the life of her, remember how to, how to code things at Walmart. And she worked in the staff, staff line department closing, and she, she would mix up the, 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 the large and the medium and everything. She would mix up everything. And my staff, Cindy, Cindy noticed that at Walmart, the donuts, anybody know the donuts at Walmart? The donuts, not the one that you eat, the donuts on the hanger. 
they were color-coded. Medium had a different color uh, than large. And so what, uh, what, 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 what um, Cindy did, she made a bracelet with beads with the same colors and put it in the same order as large, medium, small, extra large. And so um, to the young lady, she goes to, she goes to work every day with a nice bra bracelet. And people go, hey, I like your bracelet. And she said, thank you. But what it was, it was just a piece of jewelry, a resource in her hand that she looked at when she gets a large, she goes, okay, what is supposed to be beside the large? What is supposed to be beside the, the medium? And she used that. So a lot of times when we're making our modification, it doesn't have to be a person inside the job site saying, hey, do this, you do that, you do that. There are a lot of things that we can, that we can do to support people without a person being there and everybody asking, why you bring your mother to work with you today? All right, so, and then, and then um, when we get to phase five, six, and seven, these are just the back of phase. Um, sometimes <coughs> we, we, we have to go back and we, we make some substitution. Uh, we go back and we go, okay, this, 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 this. We, we thought we could, could um, begin with the natural ways, the way people do things here, but it's not w working. Let's make some adjustment. Let's make some suggestion. Let's do this. But remember, all of our suggestions and all of our uh, modification must come after we try to do th their ways. Any question on this? No? Did I confuse you that bad? And we do have um, PDF available. Get it open, right? Yeah, so uh, Linda will get those to you. This is a picture <coughs> of Jenna. Jen, and that's her, that's the president of the company that she worked with. This, this, is, this picture was taken just a few minutes before she got her job offer. Now, when Jenna came to me, Jenna, was, Jenna came from a different region, and she moved back into the Kennesaw area, and she was staying with her mother. And when I met Jenna, Jenna had only worked at McDonald's in the kitchen. And when Jenna got up, Jenna was doing something like, and I'm, I'm safety conscious. I'm very safety conscious. If I see danger, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, no, we're not doing this. So when Jenna go, I can work on the, the fries, I'm thinking, you're going to become a fry if you, if, you, if, if you go in that kitchen. And so, and I'm one of those individuals, everybody at Briggs will tell you that, you come to Briggs and I'm like, yeah, let's do our discovery. We want to get to know you. So, so I'm like, okay, let's get to know Jenna. I'm talking to Jenna and Jenna communicates very well. And uh, yes, you can tell that Jenna has um, a disability, unique abilities as I, as I like to say it, but, but Jenna is communicating very well. And I, we suggested that we do discovery. And Jana, at her church, helps with bulletins. And I don't understand for the life of me, people with disabilities will be asked to do fancy stuff at church and fancy stuff in these organizations. And when it comes to work, we go all the way back to wiping tables. And I'm like, if they can do bulleting um, for free, why can't they do it to get paid? If they can communicate and answer the phone for free, why can't we find them a job to answer the phone to, to get paid? 
Why do they have to do it for free? And then when it's time to get paid, they have to do the, the, the jobs that only pay minimum wage. So we're dealing with, we're, 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 we're getting to know Jenna. And I said to Jenna, Jenna's mother, that you know that everything that I'm seeing with Jenna here, she has the ability to be a secretary of somebody or work in somebody's office. And her mother goes, but she has never done that before. She has never done that before. And I'm like, yes, she said she did it at church. But it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. And I'm like, did, did you all know? And trust me, this, is, this might be top secret. But you, did you know that a telephone in a church does the same thing as a telephone in a corporate office? And did you know that a computer in a church does the same thing as a computer in corporate office? And I'm saying that to, to mom. And mom is like, yeah, but all right. And so we went out. And, and it's, it's so beautiful because I had a new staff at the time, Nancy, who was just struggling with her job development. Nancy could get you a retail job like this. Bam. But once she ran out of all those retail stores, that was it. And I, I said, Nancy, what I want to challenge you to do is there are, there are companies in Cobb County that you have driven past every day. And I picked a few buildings on a particular street. And I go, what do they do inside there? She go, I don't know. I said, right. Because you have never knocked on those doors. And the only way to find out what they do inside there is to go and knock and introduce yourself and find out what they do and tell them what you do. And Nancy was scared to death. Nancy goes, I don't know what to do. The doors are closed. I said, yeah, that's why you knock. If it was open, you just walk in. But if, it, if it's closed, you knock. And Nancy's in all of her scaredness. I went out with her one day, and I went into a couple of buildings, and the people were just super nice. And she was like, wow, people are really nice. They're nice, nice people. And I'm like, yeah, nice people. So now she was excited to go out on her, her own. And she called me one Wednesday afternoon, and she said, I have somebody I want you to meet. I have somebody I want you to meet. Her name is Nicole. She works at Real Floors. They want to meet you with us. They have a job. They have a job. They want to give somebody a job. They want to give some. And I'm like, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Who, who are we going to give the job to? She said, I think, I think we should give, give the job to David. David, they have a warehouse job. And I go, okay, let's go meet them. And so we went to, to Real Floors. And we had a meeting there was the HR manager, the, the operation manager, the accountant, um, the, 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 the framers, and the president. And we all were there uh, sitting at the table. And we, it was a nice uh, wooden table. You know those, those nice fancy tables that they have in their conference room that make you feel important? I'm sitting there and I'm feeling like really, really important. And we're talking about it. And, 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 and this gentleman, um, Scott, said, yeah, I love what you guys are doing. And I want you to catch this because this is important. Scott said, I love what you're doing. And I want to create something. I'm not sure what, what, what we have, but I want to create something in the warehouse. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure we can find something. Who can tell me what's wrong with that? Is that good or bad? Who said bad? Why is it bad? Bingo. You see, on the surface, it sounds like it's good. Like, okay, here's an employer who absolutely love what we do. And they love what we do. So they want to give us something, charity. And I go, Scott, I like you. But I don't like what you're saying to me right now. Can I tell you something? And he go, what do you want? What, 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 what? And I go, I just wonder if there's any real needs that you have here that are not being met. And he go, oh, there are tons of stuff, but I'm not sure if your people can do that. And I'm like, nice guy, but he needs to be informed, right? And I'm like, tell me about your needs. 
And he goes, oh, man, we got tons and tons of, uh, 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 of, of invoice that need to be filed and scanned into the computer. And I'm like, okay, all right. I have somebody that you want to meet. And we, I, I brought Jana to him, and he's explaining the position to Jana. And he goes, wow. And this is, these are the words of Scott. Scott said, I wanted to give you guys a charity job. But you taught me that people with disabilities have real abilities that can fill our real needs. And so he gave Jenna a tour of the office. And after he gave Jenna a tour of the office, he brought Jenna back in the office and said, I want to offer you a position as an administrative assistant. Now, Jenna wanted to go make fries. And now she's getting a position as an administrative assistant assistant and so Scott said that and Jana was kind of like you're sitting there and then Scott said and this position is going to pay you $16 an hour and Jana go wow <laughs> wow that was her acceptance speech <laughs> and we all laugh and but no Jana is her is um is an administrative assistant and, and, and this was her, her first day on the job. This is, this is her office. She's coming to work. And Scott made sure that he was there to welcome her and show her around. And this is Jenna uh, working on the job, just doing her stuff. She has her own cubicle and everything. And when mom heard that Jenna was taking what she did at church for free, and now she's going to be getting six, um, $16 an hour for doing this, mom was like, she couldn't believe that this was possible. But the thing is that we took the time to, to know Jana and understand what she does and, and, and know that there's going to be some training on the job, but that's all right. She's not going to go and know everything. And, and so we have our, our, our um, a typical people there that is Jana go to people. When Jana doesn't understand that, she goes to Nicole and Nicole ex explain everything to her and just very gentle with her but Jana th this is this is just an amazing position for her but the cool thing about this the cool thing about this after Jana uh, got got employed Jana got employed in January of 2020 and what happened January of 2020 COVID hit so Jana got hired and within weeks, the pandemic hits, and she had to go home. Now, Scott, pretty nice guy. Sometimes the charity side of people work, but sometimes it doesn't work. So now, the charity side of Scott is coming out, and he goes, well, I'm sending home my, empl my employees, and I'm paying them. And even though Jenna just got on a couple weeks ago, I'm sending Jenna, Jenna home. And she's going to get paid. So Jana got paid um, for like a whole three or four months just being at home because she was on the payroll. And I kind of got a little nervous about that. Is she going to get too used to free money and <laughs> doesn't want to go back to work? But she went back to work and Jana got bonuses on Christmas time. But the other thing about it, and we had another person, because what they do, they do commercial flooring at this place. And I have a young lady... <laughs> She was working at a restaurant, and she had a mask, master's in computer um, hardware, computer something, computer engineer something. But she, but she ended up, because Jana is doing so good on her job, Scott asked us, do you have anyone else? And we go, well, we have a lady who is looking for um, some, some work in computer science and he goes, well, we don't do computer science, but he explained how they do their, their framing for the floor and stuff like that. And now, um, um, Susie is working and Susie's working full time and Susie is being paid $60,000 a year because it started out with a young lady who wanted to go to McDonald's but she has more ability, and we took the time to, um, to get to know her, got her in the right place. Not only did she shine, but she paved the way for somebody else to make even more money than she's making.
when we do and when we do systematic instruction it's all about information information we we're giving information to people it's not it's not even so much the method it's it's not about correct a correction when you when you're training people in systematic instruction on the job what we're doing is we're giving people information how the job tell people what you want as opposed to not what you not what you don't want tell people um, how to make adjustment rather than telling them what they're doing wrong and when we talk about um, systematic instruction we want there are two sides to systematic instruction so far we have talked about the side of giving the instruction now systematic instruction is powerful for both the trainer and the per and the learner and this is where um it's gonna it's, 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 it's get good for me because here's the thing a lot of times the reason and i've discovered this the reason why people look for jobs at places like mcdonald's and Kroger's, uh, um, Walmart, and places like that, and ignore the ability of people that we are searching for job for, is because we have we have no confidence ourselves. We think that this is the only job that I can get them. Many of us are afraid. We're scared to death to go to uh, to walk into an office and sit down and talk to the president of a company. But but the truth is. If you know that you can do that and you have had some success doing that, your entire world changes. And so systematic instruction is about giving the trainer the confidence to know that, look, you can teach any, anything to anyone. You don't even have to know how to do the thing that you're teaching. It's about knowing how to teach. I'm not great at math. But sometimes I hear my, because my wife does homeschooling and consulting, and sometimes uh, my, I hear my wife teaching math, and I'm thinking, oh no, that kid ain't never going to get it like that. And I go, can I just go teach, can I just teach this? And I go, hey, if you do this, do that. And I go, oh, I get it. And my wife look and go, you're not even good at math. I said, I can just teach anything to anyone. That's the power of um, systematic instruction. You see, and the thing about, system, remember what we talked about the t-shirt this morning? A lot of times, when we, tea, when we do things, I'm cooking and I'm just cooking. And I'm putting this, I'm putting that, I'm putting that. But what systematic instruction does, Jenny, is allows me to create a step-by-step -step, um, system so I can say, do this, do that. So what was otherwise complex become very simple and that's the power of systematic instruction so now that i have a system that i can teach and i know that i can teach anything to anyone it gives me confidence and it opens up a whole new world the limitations that were there before systematic instruction has just um dramatically been removed because now I, the sky's the limit for me. I'm going to knock on doors because I know if you present it to me, I can teach it. And I know that if, if, if my person is not learning one way, I'll just try another way because I have the tool in my toolbox to do what is necessary. Any question? Mm-hmm. Now, are you making a list of those steps? You should.
And, and, and that's beautiful, though, because what you are discovering as you go, you're discovering that it is necessary to have an outline step, a system that you do things. And you're also realizing that the things that we take, that we do naturally, it's kind of like there is, we have a system, we just, don't write, we just don't write that system down because we know it. You know, you just get in the car and you just drive, but you have, I promise you, every single time you go in your car, there is something that you do first. You do it all the time. You don't think about it. But now that we're talking systematic instruction, we're going back to those systems and we are learning how to create system as we teach, as we teach individuals. Now, that's my wife. Isn't she lovely? She is. And there's a reason why she got so big in my school system. So when I started talking about, I could explain the thing to anyone, and I started telling her and her sister that you guys educators, educators, and you guys are terrible at it. And then she become, uh, she taught at the gifted office uh, and, and uh, as a coordinator. She was a coordinator at the gifted office. And then she was an instructional coach. And uh, now she does consulting for, 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 for Atlanta Public Schools. And during the pandemic, I was in my office doing a presentation um, for, for, for North Carolina. And as I was do doing my presentation, she kept coming to my door, my office door. I'm like, why is she distracting me? And at the end of the presentation, she goes, tell me about that systematic instruction thing. Tell me. And I'm like, oh, you want to hear about it? And so I told her about my systematic instruction. And then about four months ago, I was in my office downstairs, and she was in her office upstairs. And uh, I hear her say, you know, giving, she was giving a lecture, and she was doing a training, and everything in her presentation sounds very familiar. <laughs> For a moment, I'm like, is that me up there? Why is that? My voice is not that high, but I'm here. But why do I hear me up there? And what she did, she stole all my material. <laughs> and she started talking about and systematic instruction in education. And the thing is, when you're teaching your students, what is your system? I'm like, so the thing I'm pointing out here, systematic instruction is so real and so powerful that this is not a disability thing. It is a thing. It is a real thing. It's a teaching thing. And anybody can use it. That's how powerful it is. But the truth is, they didn't discover it. We did. And that's, and, and that's the beauty of it. And so much about her. Here's the thing. And this is, this is the best way to sum it up. Einstein said, Everyone is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its entire life believing it is stupid. And it's true. You see, a lot of times we say that people are not learning. And the, to, to begin with, you, you have them in the wrong place. I'm going to say something very controversial right now. No, I'm not going to talk politics and I'm not going to talk religion. But it's going to be controversial because people tell you this, that you can be anything you want to be. You can be anything you want to be. And everybody believe it. It is not true. It's not true. Not anybody can be anything. And it sounds wrong to say 
But a lot of times people are messed up because there are some things, there are some boat or some ship or some plane that they need to get off of. But because somebody is saying, you can do anything you want to do. If you are uh, my size, short and skinny like I used to be, I'm not going to be nobody basketball player. I'm just not. You know? And there's some things, there's some things that everybody, we all come with superpowers. And we need to, we need to get into and find our superpower and go down that path. There's some path that we're going that, that, that we're just not going to be excellent there. I remember that I, I wanted to sing on the choir when I, when I was coming up, growing up. And I, and I, and I go on and, and, and Sister Curry, she got, a, she got in front of us and she goes. And I go. Roll on to Jesus. <laughs> and and she, she looked at me and she goes, oh, what was that? <laughs> and and, 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 and uh, after the choir rehearsal, she pulled me to the side and she said, Stephen, I love your energy and I love your passion. But you, you would do best if you spend your time somewhere else other than singing. And it hurt my little feelings. <laughs> But the thing is, she was right. So I stopped singing and I started speaking. And it worked out better. You know, and, but, but before that, there were people telling me, Oh boy, if you want to sing, sing, make a joyful noise. But nobody wanted to hear my joyful noise because it just wasn't my superpower. So there's, there's, there's some time, and this is not to discourage anybody. This is to, is to give people guidance to say, look, if you're going through, if you're in the water and you're not a fish, or if, you're, if, you're, if they're training you to climb a tree and you're a fish, it's probably not going to happen. And this is what systematic instruction does. It's like we find people's superpower, we get to know them, and this is where we're going with discovery. Because when we get to discovery, you're going to see all of this coming together. Because when you get there and you identify the power that lies within people and you know people, that's when you can train them. So, Jonathan here, he had the same thing that Chris that we started with had. Jonathan had a bad attitude. Jonathan was working at Home Depot. And as Jonathan was working at Home Depot, Jonathan, he was watering plants, and Jonathan would water, and he would wipe his hand. He would move a pot, and he'd put the same pot down and wipe his hand and pick up the same. And he was just angry every day he comes to work because he did not like picking up the stuff. He did not like getting, getting dirty. And as a, re as a result of that, they asked Jonathan not to come back when the season was over. And we would talk to Jonathan, and Jonathan would go, I don't want to work anymore. I don't want to work. Because he had a bad experience with his first job. And I, I said, Jonathan, can we just get to know you? And he's like, oh, okay. And then Cassie did a discovery with Jonathan. And Jonathan walked into um, Dick's sporting, sporting Goods. And Jonathan was just excited about that. And was looking at all the sporting gears. And he was, he was just happy talking about these things. And there's this store, Durham, which is like about five miles from Jonathan's house. Cassie went there and did job development. And Jonathan got a job there, the short of it. And Jonathan... It's just the happiest guy at work. Jonathan owns this store. When people walk in that store, Jonathan talk about the store like it is his store. He took on, he's taking ownership of everything. And the whole thing about it, when Jonathan was at, at Home Depot, that just wasn't his, his superpower. Right here with sporting goods, Jonathan is a happy man. Jonathan went to the manager. When he was at Home Depot, we couldn't get him to go to work. Jonathan went to the manager in this store 
and said, I want to work more hours. Jonathan loved to eat. Jonathan is just a guy who, he just loved to eat. So when it comes to like working on, 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 on days like Thanksgiving and Black Friday, Jonathan wants nothing to do with that. But this Black Friday, Jonathan told the manager that they should put him on. So right after Thanksgiving, Jonathan was rushing out of his house to go to work because he loves his job. When a person is in the right fit and we have the right match, you see a whole new person coming out. So people, here's the thing about systematic instruction and the importance of it. A lot of times, people with disabilities are taught to follow, but not to lead. Have you ever noticed, have you ever gone to an IEP meeting or an ISP meeting, and it's almost like the person is not there? It is their plan, but somehow the goals that they have, they didn't create those goals. They didn't write those goals, and it's like, uh, the next time you see somebody with disability um, that have goals, ask them, do you know your goals? What's your goals? And then my goals, what goals? Because the thing about it is, a lot of times we behave as if people with disabilities are invisible, or if they don't, are, are as if they don't have choices for themselves. So we teach them to follow and not take the lead. In systematic instruction, we allow them to take the lead. It's about them and not about us. You see, a lot of times people look at people with disabilities and go, okay, this is what they can do. Is we, we look at the person and we sum them up already that they're not going to be able to do this and they're not going to be able to do that. And we, give, we don't give them any challenge. But people grow when you challenge them. And people with disability deserve the respect to be challenged. When you remove my challenge, you are not respecting me. So uh, for, for the longest time, people with disabilities, they're just given low tasks, easy tasks, because we don't want to discourage them. And of course, people have good intention, but they're not getting any good results because they, they're going to go, okay, this is where you can work. You can wipe tables. You can do this. You can do that. And at this, all the same time, we're using people with disabilities to do great things elsewhere. We're just not paying them for that. And of course, my favorite is that people with disabilities are not limited by their inability, but my lack of knowledge. And because this is all I know, this is, all, this is where I can take them. We cannot carry people further than we have already gone. We cannot carry people past our ability. So in order for us to allow people to excel, we ourselves must excel. And this is why I'm proud to say that at Briggs & Associates, I don't know any uh, supported employment agency that's going to pay more than we pay. And the reason for that is you have a hard time getting people to go the extra mile if they're coming to, to work wondering if their bills are going to pay. So, so in order for us, so in what I want my, pe my staff to, uh, to treat people with disability is that's how I treat them. We teach people out how to treat us. So, uh, so it, is, it is very important that we, that we invest in our staff so that our staff have the tools that they are going to use to take people. Because look, we're dealing with people. One of the things that I say to people before I hire them is this. If you're working in a warehouse and you're tired of those boxes, you can drop it and you can leave anytime and it does nothing to the boxes. And that's okay. When you're working with people, you introduce yourself to them and they introduce themselves to you. You ask them important things about themselves, personal information. They share themselves with you. And when you drop them and leave, you take that information with you and somebody else come and they have to share again. 
and keep sharing and it's not fair. So I tell people, if you're not coming to stay, please tell me right now because we cannot put people down like we're putting down boxes. And I promise that if you come to us, we're going to invest in you so that you can be the best that you can be so that you can pull this person to be the best that they can be. And that's about systematic instruction. It allow us people to get, allow people to gain knowledge so that they can um, share the knowledge and give direction to people with disabilities. And it, and it comes come back, right back to the point. When you know that you can teach a skill, your vision of careers just open up. Opportunities just open up. The sky is the limit. The role of the employment specialist. This is important. You got to get this. The role of the employment specialist. When you go on a job site, the way you enter, the way you leave. The way you leave. The way you enter, the way you leave. You see, employment specialist is not a replacement of the employer or the co-workers. When you go on a site and you're you're supporting somebody the, it, there is a problem if the employer is communicating to you and not the person that they hired if the employers keep telling uh, telling me that hey can you can you let johnny know this there is a major problem here it means that johnny don't exist in the employer's mind or oh, johnny is not valuable so we have to teach employers that, look, you're not hiring me, you're hiring Johnny. And it's not a two-for-one special. Cindy, I talk about Cindy, I love her. She's a great em um, e e employee of mine. Well, was. Um, she's not working with us anymore. But she was one of my best staff. And she goes the extra mile. And Chimmy, who works at Walgreen, um, Cindy was supporting Chimmy. And so I got on the job site one day because a Cindy, something happened in Cindy's family and she had to be out extendedly. And so I got on the job site and Mar Marlon, who, who is the store manager, I'm supporting Jimmy. And Marlon is passing by me. He's walking and he does. And then he kept walking. I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't know what that was for, you know. And then he's coming back. And he's passing by me, and he go, and I'm like, oh, yeah, there's definitely something. And he, have you ever noticed somebody do something and they have that lookish um, look on their face that tells you that something is not quite right? And then he did that like about three times, and then his frustration got the better of him, and he stopped and he go, when is Cindy coming back? And I said, well, she's going to be gone for about another three weeks. And he go, Okay. And he just kept walking. And I know that he was in the heights of frustration with me. And I knew what I was doing wrong too. Because I was doing everything right. That's what I was doing wrong. You see, when Cindy got to the job site, Cindy look and Cindy look and there were some things that Chimmy was doing too slow. So, Chimmy, so, uh, so Cindy helped Chimmy out and she does it for him. And she's doing fine. And so while Cindy was on the job site, man, Chimmy was the fastest worker in the store. And then I came on the job site and I'm not doing Chimmy's work. I am coaching Chimmy and I'm giving him direction because I want the employer to know what Chimmy is capable of, not what Chimmy and I are capable of because I don't work for Walgreens. And so Chimmy's speed went down significantly when, 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 when I got there. And the employer didn't like that because he was used to um, that two-for-one special. And the thing is, when we go on job site, we got we to gotta let the employers know what our individuals are capable of. Don't set them up for failure because, look, you're not always going to be the person who coached coach, um, that individual. And the truth is, people will never know their true ability if you keep doing everything for them. You remember this morning? Uh, 
when you ask me, can I help her? I'm like, why are you asking me that? I don't know if you can help her. She's the one who wants, you, you ask if she wants help. And this is, when, when I'm on the job site, we always want to make sure that the person that we support is the, employ, is the employee. If, when there's a situation, you want to seek the employer's um, solution before you propose any solution. If there's, like, I got a call from, from, from an employer about Sterling. When Sterling goes to work, Sterling is sitting in the break room for about 30 minutes before he goes to work. And the employer called me about it. And I go, why are you calling me about that? Really, why are you calling me? Right now, I'm up in Cartersville, Georgia, and Sterling is down in Douglasville, Georgia, and you're calling me, telling me that he's sitting in the break room. Why you call me? And they go, well, we just figured that you, no, Sterling works for you. I said, let me ask you this. If it was another staff sitting in the break room, what would you do? Well, we would tell him to go to work. Did you know that Sterling has ears? And he understands the language that you speak? If you tell him, just try that and tell me what, ha what happened. And she went and she said, Sterling, you cannot sit in the break room. You're on the clock. You got to be in your position. And she came back and said, wow, it works. I can't believe that it works. I'm like, yes, you are the boss. He's your employee. And if you tell him to do it, he will. Treat him with respect, but have the same expectation that you have from our, our other worker. When, when there are modifications that we, and accommodations that we must make, we will make them. But don't just think that you cannot speak to him. He's not going to break if you tell him that he needs to do his job. He promised that he was going to do his job when he came. So I'm not going to train an employer to, to, to make me an employee. And we shouldn't do that. The employer is the expert at their job. You can always remember that. When I go to real floor, I don't know anything about um, floors. When I go to um, children hospital in Atlanta, I don't, I, I, I'm not a medical doctor. Uh, wh wh when I go to Home Depot, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not skilled in that department. I know a lot about employment. I know, I know a lot about psychology. I know that. So I will lend my support in the area uh, that I am expert in, but I'm going to let the employer be the employer and be the expert at their business. The employment specialists, we are expert at disabilities, but we are not expert in those other areas. So it's very important that we don't take over from the employer. And the most important thing is, if we don't remove ourselves, the person that we serve will never become included and fully uh, gain full equity in the workplace. And we have a responsible responsibility for that. This gentleman here. All right, load up. Uh certain key smart make sure it's the right one make and make updates as needed and then we have a bottom plan the top plan and the web mm -hmm. so and then what is that drake you take the information from that and you input it um no we run it run you have to put in the actual length first there's a lot of measurement all right so if anybody understood anything that he just said please explain to me because i didn't understand anything either what i tell you okay mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. We heard that. The, the, the key about this is, Jenny, 
I don't know, I don't know his job. I don't. We went to, he's operating right there, a $1 million equipment. He makes $35 an hour doing this job. We went there looking for a data entry position for him. But we had already done his discovery. And so we were doing a job analysis and talking about the employer's needs. And as we're talking about the employer's need, the employer talk about this, this equipment and it, it has to do with a lot of numbers and preciseness and all of that. And he just cannot find the right person to work this equipment. And the more he talks about it, we're like, this sounds like Chad. And then as the employer started talking, Chad and the employer went off into a conversation. And I'm like, what in the world are these two talking about? I have no clue what they're talking about. And they're getting excited. And I'm standing there like, okay, I'm just standing here. And they just totally ignored me for, for like about 20 minutes. And then he offered Chad the job. And Chad said, I'll take it. And I'm like, are you sure you'll take it? You should... You sure you know what you're talking about? And the employer go, man, this guy, he's on point with everything. And so that was one of my colleagues that, that, that he was explaining the job about. And she didn't even get it either. She asked a question. And he go, no, that's not what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. And I still don't know how to explain his job. I, I was able to do some training on this job by saying, okay, the employer wants you to do this. And he wants you to do that. And... Does that sound like it? And it's like, yes, that sounds like it. But, and this is the whole thing about systematic instruction where you can train somebody on a job that you yourself don't even know. That's the power of it. And Chad, he's making real serious money um, doing this job. I, but the thing about it is, remember, we went there for data entry, but we went there also to find the employer's need. Sometimes if you go into a job site, you know what you're looking for, but talk about the employer's needs. Talk about the, the person's skill. And don't just limit the person's skill to what's in your head or what you have seen. Allow the per If the person can represent themselves, allow them to do that also. Give some guidance and you would be amazed at what you come out with. Because when I walk, when I walked away from that, Chad Mother tells people that, man, Stephen got just Chad this job. And I'm like, thank you. <clears throat> and then I'm like, you know, I didn't get that job, right? <laughs> you know, Chad got that job. But thank you anyway. Put it on my resume. And then this is the this is the other piece of the puzzle. If you do not know someone. You cannot customize employment for them. So it all begins with discovery. You have to have adequate knowledge about a person before you can customize a job for them. Who was a special ed teacher here? There was here. Yeah, you were. All right. You. You're excluded from my, from my little quiz right now, okay? Is there any other, are there any other teachers in the room? You are excluded too. Any other teacher? Because, and the reason I'm saying this, the teachers messed me up the last time. <laughs> the teachers messed me up. But the whole point is, as we customize employment, there's some questions we ask. Who is this person? What are their capabilities? What are they interested in? What are their talents? What are their strengths? What are their stories? What are their stories? Who is this person? I'm Jamaican. But y'all didn't know that. And Jamaicans are cool people. We're so cool that every time people see us, they say cool runnings. Every single time people meet me on the street and I say I'm Jamaican, they go, cool runnings, man. And I'm like, okay, cool runnings. <laughs> and, and, and then there, there's, there, there's something else that people do when they see me on the street and I say I'm Jamaican. They said, 
ganja. And I'm like, oh, uh, uh, that's my reputation. But you don't know me. But the thing is, there are some, um, uh, there are some um, stereotypes about Jamaicans uh, that people take it. And if you're from Jamaica, you get it, whether you want it or not. It's true for Alabama, too. Everybody believe that you all are Alabama fan. And I know that some of you are um, Georgia Bulldogs fan. And then they're, they're just um, stereotypes goes around. And stereotypes are really that one story or that, those two stories that people believe about you. Now, the thing about stereotypes is not that stereotypes are wrong. Most of the stereotypes about me that people talk about Jamaicans are relaxed and all of that. Oh, I'm very relaxed. I'll walk around. The building will be burning down and I'll be like, yeah, I'm getting up. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Everything. Around. Come on. You see, you see that fire over there? Uh, th that, that's, my, that's, my, that's my personality. And I learned that growing up in Jamaica. So when you say Jamaicans are just cool, it's true. But the thing about stereotypes is that they are incomplete. Because while that is true about me, that's not the only thing that's true about me. And if you're going to sum me up, you want to get all of my stories to know who I am. And that's what discovery is about. Getting to know people, not just because, not just that the person uses a wheelchair or not that the person is on the spectrum. That is true that the person uses a wheelchair. And it's true that the person is on the spectrum, but what else is there is to know about the person? And that's where um, discovery comes in. So what is discovery? Discovery is a qualitative approach that aims to understand people in as many aspects as is necessary to develop an effective customized plan for employment. No people, like I just said, as many stories about the person as you can get. Oh, so I'm sorry, were you taking a picture of that? Oh, I thought I saw you take, oh, you were just texting? All right. Okay, all right, all right, keep, oh, keep texting. Oh. <laughs> that's, my, that's my story. <laughs> now, everybody except my teachers, have and my teachers can join in 10 seconds to la locate all of those teachers at the bottom they're up there 10 seconds five four three two one i give you a five extra seconds Okay, I am sorry. I am very sorry. Please, ac please accept my apology on that. All right. Let me see the end of those who found all of those teachers. All of that. Did anybody find all of them? No? No, even though I gave you extra time? All right, let's try this again. I give you 10 seconds. And tell me if you find everything. Has anyone found everything? Yeah? Anybody else found everything? We all found everything, right? Now, what's the difference? How did you find it so easy this time? They were highlighted, right? So here's the thing. In this picture, were they out there? They were there. But it was hard to find them, right? In this picture, same picture, they are at the very same spot, and we found them so easy. And the reason why we found them so easily is because we had a little bit of help, right? And that's what discovery is when we talk about our people 
with disabilities. They have qualities. They have skills. They have desires. They have, they have contribution to make um, to, to, to businesses. Uh, there's just so much about them. But a lot of times, we look at them and we don't see all of those qualities. Because we are so limited in our own views that we cannot see past that the person is on the spectrum. We can't see past that the person uses a cane or a wheelchair. But with a little bit of help, we can realize that there is so much more to the person than what we, 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 than what we are looking at. And that's what discovery does. Discovery allows us to knock on the doors that's going to give us the help that we need in order to find those inequalities of the person and bring them to the surface. So, discovery is not about filling out forms. A lot of times people go, so, when you do discovery, in fact, I was doing discovery with this young lady, and her mom keep telling me, so, do you know the things that she cannot do? Do you know what she cannot do? And I said, Here's the thing about discovery. It's 100% positive. You begin with an A and you end, you, you end with an A. You see, discovery is not filling out forms to go, okay, he, she can do this, she cannot do this, she cannot do that, she cannot do that. Discovery is getting to know the person, getting to know the contribution a person has to offer. It's a process that helps you get to know a person in setting where they are most who they are and by that i mean i want you to understand that believe it or not except for a few of us we're fake we're fake did you know you're fake yeah you don't think you're fake right trust me sonia you hide some things linda did you know you're fake did you know that you're fake? She's like, what is he talking about? <laughs> I am fake. I am a fake as they come. But I'm not being fake right now. But here's the thing. When I say we're fake, this is what I mean. We are know how to survive in society we know when to be proper and we know when to be loose i want you to understand that we have to who got children did you know you got did you know that your son you got a son you got a, you got daughters did you know that the person that your daughter friends know you don't know that person mm -hmm. yeah the, the thing about it is the way I behave in certain settings is different from the way I behave in other settings. Uh, there are some people who bring out some things in all of us that some people do not bring out. And so when we're doing discovery, in our, I want to know the Johnny and the Mary that the friends know, that mama don't know. And I want to know the, 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 the Beverly at church and I want to know the Beverly in the clubs. I want to know everything about that, that person. I went to church with Chimmy. Chimmy is, the, is the, quiet, the most quiet guy I know. And Chimmy, I went to church with Chimmy when I was doing his discovery because I really wanted to, to know Chimmy. And when I know Chimmy, well, this is a Chimmy that I know. Yes, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. That's a Chimmy that I know. I went to church and I'm sitting beside Chimmy and uh, the, the music director got up and they announced a song and uh, they're singing their, a slow song and Chimmy is like, and I'm like, he's really paying attention to this. And then uh, um, the church that Chimmy um, attends, they get you know, the, the musician, he warms up and, 
and they are warming up and they they start singing and the music is playing and 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 i'm even feeling the movement in my body too i'm like yeah and and i'm looking at chimmy and chimmy's doing it and i'm like wow this guy before and chimmy started to before but the thing about it is i would never seen that with chimmy just walking in the streets with him or just sitting at his home i had to see that in church so what that tells me is that given the right situation chimmy is going to get out of his shell and this is what we do in discovery we get to know people in so many different domains so that we can tell we can we can write the employment plan and say this is what the person can do there's some people and i tell you this you are gonna be very surprised when i tell you that i don't tell people about myself i used to tell i like to tell other stories about other people god i'm tired oh man yes but i like to tell stories about other people but there's most people who know me cannot tell that i am an introvert yeah but i am but most people who have seen me they see me in a setting like this and when i'm talking to to to, to people i'm good at talking to people um well i think i am uh, but but I have no problem talking to people like this, but I can sit in a room all day by myself with a, with a thousand people and I, I walk out there and never speak to one person. I have to make myself talk to people one-on-one -on -one because I know that I am, I am not a person who just, uh, I am a very functional speaker. If I'm going to knock on doors to find jobs, I can do that. But in social gathering, I can be very awkward. But people who know me in a speaking capacity go, oh man, he's, he, 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 he's, he's energetic, he's this, he's that, he's that, he's that. And the truth is, if you take the time to know me, you would learn something else, right? And this is exactly what discovery does. It takes a person who is loud and said so this person can be quiet there and the loudness the reason why they're loud, loud being so loud they are trying to mask something else and 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 so discovery help you to find all of those things and this is why we get people in different domain this is miss virginia miss virginia works at first response and Miss Virginia tells me that this is her last year working. She's going to retire. And I say, yes, good for you. Now, if I'm going to choose one of our best success story, it's going to be Miss Virginia. When Miss Virginia came to us, she was given to us, uh, sent to us by, by a state uh, agency. And the agency said that in their exact words, we don't know what you're going to do with this one. That's exactly how they described her we don't know what you're gonna do with this one and i'm naive i'm very naive you see i have my philosophy that oh you can't bring a person to me who's gonna challenge me that much and i'm there in my naiveness and miss virginia walked in and miss virginia looked down at me and she goes are you good for anything and i'm like uh, nobody has ever asked me that before <laughs> but I, I think i am she goes are you just like the rest of them who cannot even find a job if you put, if you if you put it in a milk jar and give it to them and i'm like oh, what? i never heard that before <laughs> but the thing about miss virginia miss virginia when she came to us miss virginia had five jobs I want you to listen carefully I want you to catch this miss virginia had five jobs Dollar General, fired. Family Dollar, fired. Dollar Tree, fired. Dollar Zone, fired. Walmart, fired.
expired. What she did at, at, at the $4? Cashiering. What she did at Walmart? Cashiering. Got fired from a cashiering job in similar stores. Now, when she was telling me about her job, her jobs, I'm like, that's a whole lot of dollar you got going on there, Miss Virginia. And personally, after you got fired from the second dollar, I would start looking somewhere else. I mean, how in the world a person got fired from the same store five times? And you're going, you said five different stores. No, yes, I said five different stores, but it's the same exact thing that she's doing. You think somebody would, would realize that this is not her thing. Miss Virginia has Asperger. And Miss Virginia says whatever is on her mind. And if you're frustrating Miss Virginia, she doesn't care if you're a customer or not. She's going to tell you how she feels about you. If Miss Virginia thinks you're stupid, she's going to tell you that you're stupid. And she's, and she's going to say it in a voice that everybody around her hears. And that's her, the last straw at Walmart was a, was, 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 was a customer came up and said something to her. And she said, I guess your mama didn't raise her right. And they thought that she couldn't say that. So they fired her. So, the first time I went job development with Miss Virginia, Miss Virginia came, and Miss Virginia had half of her pasta on her, ch on her shirt. She had pasta for lunch, and half of it was on her shirt. And we go in job development. Miss Virginia said, do I look nice? Do I look nice? Do I look nice? And I go, you look beautiful, Miss Virginia. But there's just a little stain on your shirt. Um, and she goes, what? And I'm like, okay, I, I can't say anything to you. Okay, we're going to have to figure this out. And I realized that every single time that I meet Miss Virginia, Miss Virginia, the, 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 uh, the way she dressed is like it was not presentable. And I reach out to my, my friends at Georgia Vocational um, Agency and I said, is there any way we can um, have a, a person help her? And she asked the lady to leave her house when they came to help her. And they said, there's nothing we can do. And I go, well, I guess I'm on my own with this one. And so, but the thing about Miss Virginia, she has a degree in finance. And nobody could place her in a job in finance because they feel like the conventional office setting was just not her thing. And they were right. But what they didn't understand is that there are other settings other than conventional office settings. And so my search was to find a setting that is not a conventional office setting. And one day... I decided to knock on one of those doors uh, that I don't know what was behind. And this is real. The, wor the world is a beautiful place. How many of us know how beautiful this world is? Because there's so much diversity in this world and it's happening every day. You don't know what's going on behind that wall. And I'm not going to tell you. I walked in and I walked upstairs. And as I was going up the stairs... I heard this, Derek! What? Come on. I'm going up. And the next thing I heard, you don't sign my paycheck, I sign yours. And I'm like, wow, this sounds good inside here. I like it. And as I go up and, and I looked in, 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 in the first office, uh, there was a lady, and I promise you, she just rolled out of bed. I knew it because she was in her PJ, and her hair was a hot mess. 
And I'm like, this place is cool. I like this place. And then I walked towards the next office, and then there was a young man there. He's, he's wearing a baseball cap. It used to be green and white, but now it's black and, 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 and brown, dirty brown. And I'm like, man. And I go, that must be Derek, because he's the only male in this office. And then on this side was a voice. I said there was a voice because I was hearing it, but I couldn't see the voice. And I realized that there was a stack of paper on this desk, uh, uh, and the voice was behind those papers. And I heard the voice said, Jessica! And I'm like, okay, so there's somebody. And I walked in and I go, hi. And she goes, hi. I said, my name is Stephen. And she goes, what you want? And I'm like, I'm loving this woman already. She don't know me, I don't know her, but all I knew was that I love her. And I, 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 I said, can I sit down? She said, at your own risk. And I'm like, man, I'm like, this is the best office in the world. And I sat down and I, and, and I said, what's your name? And she said, my name is Kathy. And I said, Kathy, I do a thing called supported employment. And I have a young lady who's looking for a job. And she has a degree in finance. And I'm looking at all the papers. And she goes, can she do invoicing? Does she know anything about QuickBooks? And I'm like, uh, she can learn it. And she's telling me all her needs. And all the needs that she had, Virginia was the right person to fill those needs. But the best part about it, the office, the office was a total mess. And Virginia needed a total mess to work in. And so I went and I, and, 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 and I, and I told Miss Virginia, I said, look, uh, there is, a, I have a job for you. And Virginia go, okay. And I didn't get the job yet. But I knew that Kathy had a need that only Virginia could fill. Because nobody else was going was gonna, to um, meet Kathy demands and stand up to her. And Miss Virginia goes, do you think she can take the smoke? And not Miss Virginia. Kathy goes, do you think she can take the smoke in this kitchen? And I go, you all don't know. <laughs> you all don't know, <laughs> Virginia. And so Virginia and I, we walked into the office um, the next day. And the first thing, Virginia, she hasn't gotten a job yet. She hasn't done the interview yet. And Virginia looked at Kathy and Virginia said, I just want to know if I'm going to be at the bottom of the totem pole. I'm like, what? She, she, that's how you're going to introduce yourself? And Kathy said, I like you. Match made in heaven. And, the, and, 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 and Kathy asked Virginia some question, and Virginia answered the question, and she got hired on the spot. And Virginia, on her first day at work, the first day at work, she was, and Virginia drives, she was driving home, and she pulled over her car to call me, and she said, Stephen, for the first time in my life, I'm driving home from work, looking forward to go to work the next day. And when she said that, I realized that nobody could pay me any money to do what I do. Because what I do is not about money. It's really about walking down the street and see somebody's life and picking it up. And say to the person, good morning, here's your life. Take, char take charge of it. That's what we do. Miss Virginia is settled in her job, working in the field that she studied. That everybody gave her a job because it was easy to get and easy to lose. We just took a little bit more time to get to know her. Know the support that she needs. And find an environment that she can grow in. You see, the thing is, I'm, I'm from Jamaica. And I like tropical fruits. I like mangoes. I do not like mango juice. I like mangoes. Not mango juice. <laughs> you see, 
when I just met my wife, I want to say that she, she just fell head over heels for me. She, and she realized that I was from Jamaica, and so she went to the store, and she got some mango juice. And she says, Stephen, look what I got you. Mango juice. And I said, I don't like mango juice. And she said, but you're Jamaican. I said, yes, but I don't like mango juice. She said, you don't like mango? I said, yes, I like mango, but I don't like mango juice. And she said, okay. And I thought she got it. And then when um, Coca-Cola came out with um, body armor, she came home and she got some body armor. And she said, I got a mango one for you. And I said, I don't like mango juice. I like mango. And I think she got it now because I raised my voice. But the point I'm making is, there's an easy way to do things. And then there's the way to do things that brings results. And, so, and the easy way is to look and go, this is this person. This is Virginia. Virginia is challenging. Uh, Virginia is never going to fit in an office. In an office. So just get, get her an easy job. And the thing about it is when we put people in positions that doesn't work for them, Here's what happened. Every time a person gets terminated from a job, a piece of their self-esteem goes with it. And their, and their confidence goes down. And if that happens too, too often, the person will feel like they're useless. They cannot do anything. And this is why it is so important for us to get to know people so that we can walk beside them and get them to the place that is right for them where they're going to be supported it is very very important to do that when miss virginia called me up and said i think this is the last year i'm going to work i am going to retire when she said that it's music because here's a person who every job that she left it was because they booted her out now she's at a job in her career that she's saying, I'm going to leave on my term. It doesn't get any better than that. And so here's the thing. And this is exactly Virginia's story. Discovery is to identify the best a person has to offer. Tyler worked several jobs and he, he too got fired listen to this Tyler got fired from several jobs but before Tyler got his first job he was in project search anybody familiar with project search Tyler did project search at a hospital in his community his job at the hospital was to work on linens. At the end of the year, working for free, volunteering, Tyler ended project, project search. And Tyler went to work at Taylor's farm. Terrible at it. Tyler got terminated from Taylor's farm, and he worked at Publix. Got terminated. Terrible at it. Tyler, dad, reached out to Briggs and Associates and said, look, we need some support with Tyler. And as I'm getting to know Tyler, Tyler, um, Tyler and I, we're going, we, we, we went about and we went to Home Depot and we got a job offer. And I'm still wondering if that was the right job for Tyler. And I'm driving home. I'm taking Tyler back to his house. And we're passing by the hospital. 
that he did project search. And Tyler said, I want to work there. He just got a job offer. He said, I want to work there. I had a decision to make. So I pulled into the hospital and I walked in and I went to the, to the HR's office. And as soon as we walk into the building, they were like, hey, Tyler, hey, Tyler, hey, Tyler. And I'm like, they actually like him here. Wow. And so they called the people from Linning. Hey, guess who is in the room? Tyler is here, Tyler. And they came up and they're greeting Tyler. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, this is going to be good for me. My job has never, ever been this easy. So as Susan and Daniel came in the room, I said, Tyler worked in Linen. They go, yeah. I said, how was it? They're like, he was phenomenal. He was fantastic. We love Tyler. We love him. We love him. We love him. And I go, do y'all know Tyler would love to work in Linen? And they kind of like starting to pedal back a little bit. And I'm like, so when he did it for free, you love him. And he really wants to work. But you but you won't you you're paying somebody else to do the job that he did one year of his life for for free because he was in project search and he was great at it. And they paused for a moment. And Susan said, You know what, sir? Susan didn't catch my name. So she called me sir. People who don't know my name, they call me sir. Don't know why. But she goes, sir, you know what, sir? You're right. We're not, we're not right. We shouldn't do that. If he wants to work here, he should work here. We, he really did a good job. There were, there were, there were times when we had to, have, I, I had to encourage him and coach him in some areas. And I go, that's why, that's why we're here. We can coach him. We can help him to succeed. And Tyler got his job back. And they hired him. They started him out at, at, at $12 an hour. And here's the thing. Within a year, Tyler got an award as the most pleasant person to work. Tyler had gotten three, fired from, from, from two jobs. Now Tyler is, re is receiving an award from, from the corporate office as the most pleasant person to work with. And he's happy. Tyler has been on this job now for four years. And the thing about it is Tyler said, this is what I want. When we give people what they ask for, when we give people what they ask for, it works. Tyler too was an essential worker during the pandemic. So here's the thing, and I'm wrapping up discovery. Discovery is broad. Discovery is descriptive. It's opinion free, it's respectful, it's comprehensive, it's non-comparison, and it belongs to the person. It is very person-centered. That's what discovery is all about. It's all about the person. And remember, no one person, no two people have all the information about the individual that we are supporting. And this is why when we do discovery, we talk to a wide uh, range of people. We talk to the individual, we observe them, we do, we do um, activities with them. Um, we talk to their parents, we talk to other family members, siblings, we talk to friends, we talk to other pay staff, neighbors, teachers, because the person that the teacher know is not the person that the neighbor know and is not the person that the friends know. So we get all of these stories and we put them together and then we know who the person is. And from the discovery, of course, like I said, it takes time and you, you realize that. We do interviews, we do um, spend time together, participation, do activity with them, just talk about that. This is, this is just um, pictures of David we're doing discovery with David right here. We're in David's home. We're, in the, we're at the park with David. That's Nancy right there with her back turned to us. That's one of David's staff that does CLS with him. D that's David at the um, animal rescue um, 
volunteer with the cat. We get into the we're doing this discovery. We're doing discovery with David. This David in the store trying to um is making purchases. And all of this we're collecting data about David so that at the end of this we can we can put everything together and say who is David and, and get him in the right job. That's doing Halloween, still doing discovery. Now it led us here. This is it led us David in customer service. That's where it led us. And this is David at work after his discovery. This picture here is David. And, and the crazy thing about David's discovery, when we were talking to people and they're telling me that David uh, needs to be in customer service, I wasn't getting it. I was, try I was trying to figure out how is this going to work, but I, trust I trusted the process. That young lady here, David is actually training her on the job now. So from David not knowing what he can do to discovery leading us here to David being a trainer on the job. At the end of the day, we do not come to conclusion fast when we, when we are doing discovery. We follow the process. We don't rush the judgment. We trust the, da the data. And once we do that, we get people in a situation where they ought to be. I'm going to fast forward because we're out of time. And I'm going to take us to, to one slide that I want us to see. As a stalking technician and courier, my job is to pick up and deliver hospital specimens which make kids happy and healthy and send home in helicopters. Do you like your job? Yes. What's your favorite part of your job? Getting money for doing fun things with my stepmother. What else do you like about children's? It has vision, values, and values, vision, and mission. Our values are care about people, passionate about kids, dedicated to better. My vision is best care for healthier kids, and I'm on a mission to make kids better today and healthier tomorrow. So, so, Lali was described as on employable unemployable I don't know what that means I don't know how you how you can describe someone as unemployable children hospital of Atlanta he just told me what his job was is so I don't have to tell you that but the way we found Raleigh's job is we realized that Raleigh has a passion for kids he would not he, he could not stand to see a kid hurt. And we went to Children's Hospital, and the nurses were the ones who were taking the specimen from one section to the next, and they hated it. And you know, nurses got paid probably about, I don't know, $50 an hour, something more than that, $70 an hour. Nurses are paid pretty good. And they're, and they're doing, uh, doing their job. You do not need a nursing degree to take this from here and take it over here, right? You don't need a nursing degree to do that. But we had nurses doing that, and the nurses, they just wanted to get back to what they do. And we look in the, in the waiting room, and the waiting room were, were packed with people. And we said to them, we asked for a meeting with the president of the hospital, and we got it. And we said, we well, need to take it to some money. And, they, and he said, how? I said, your nurses hate taking specimens from one location to the other. And plus, you're paying them too much to take specimen over there. We have somebody who can do for fifteen dollars an hour. Simple. And he's he's pretty he'll, he'll be pretty good at it if we train him right. Allow us to train him. And that's how Rally got his job. Because he um, he took that away from the nurses and the nurses are happy and Rally is happy and Rally is having a good life, good employment, good pay to do what he does. And that's what customizing 
and so on, that it's all about, you look at what the person can do. We know that life can walk. And we know that it can take up something with his ass. And we know that if you're given the, the right direction, because he had to do for the entire hospital, so we got systematic instruction where he starts at the same place and ends at the same place every single day. So Ronnie goes in and he does the same thing every single day, even if there's nothing here, he's still going to walk in there, look at the table, and move on to the next step. And that's how Ronnie does his job. The, the, cool, the best part about Ronnie's job, and I, I promise this is the last thing I'm going to tell you, Ronnie loves children, and they make donations to the children's hospital. And one day, Riley saw them having the fundraising. Riley took his wallet out and he dropped it in the, in, in the, in the container and he just left it and went away because he wanted to give contribution. But because Riley is so supportive and everybody knows Riley, they looked at the money and they saw his ID and they, got it, and they got his wallet back. But now, every time Riley got his steady, he, he, he takes the first thing Riley does, he walks up to where they make contribution. And he gives a donation back to the hospital and then he moves on to do his job to, to do his job. So here we have a guy that was being unemployed, he's working in a fine job, and he's giving back to society. The truth is, if you have to decide to work, you can be successful in the workplace. It's called customized employment. Done through. Systematic instruction and discovery. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank for everything. And um he we will get the slides to you all. Um so I've only got a few things to say. Um, we'll wrap it up. I know we're we're good on time. So thank you all for coming. Um, I do need everybody's forms. Some of them have been turned in and some are still on the table. Um, and so we had that session today where everybody talked about their projects. I hope that was helpful. And I think maybe if you look at your project planning guide that you that we talked about and we did the last few weeks, if you would kind of do a revision of it if, if you need to, if something's changed or if you've added to a team or added a team member, work on that and then we'll look at those on our Wednesday meeting on February 9th. And I know we have a February meeting, but I also wanted to talk about the next in-person meeting in, Mo it's in March, that's gonna be in Mobile, Alabama. I just wanna make sure everybody knows that because I know transportation is a big, issue and deal for everybody so talk to each other while you're here if you need to for uh, maybe you know carpooling or something or just keep that in mind that it's in mobile okay any questions i know jenny and veronica had wanted to talk to you all about a few things and i also know that sonia was trying to get everybody together for a few minutes after this i think there's a zoom link available for that because i know alex and clifton need to pack all of this equipment up and go I don't know if um, Veronica and, and Jenny can use that other time discussion to start out your things with that. Okay. Right. Okay. So anyway, that's the conclusion. Um, is any, unless anybody has any other big questions you can see me afterwards so um, I'm gonna pass it I don't know if you need a microphone